والله يدعو إلى دار السلام ويهدي من يشاء إلى صراط مستقيم Islam is keeping up the pace Islam is for every race بسم الله الحمد لله Peace, salam alaikum, and welcome to this edition of the Beauties of Islam. Beautiesofislam.com is the website that we have. You can do some follow-up there and watch some more of the programs like this. And one of the things that I think that I would like to speak about today is our relationship again. We talked about our relationship between the human beings and Allah, Creator. We talked about the relationship somewhat about our prophet peace be upon him and the rest of the creation even the animals birds trees and flowers but today i'd like to focus a little bit more on our relationship to the prophet muhammad peace be upon him <clears throat> some people will tell you i love allah isn't that enough i love god isn't that enough just leave me alone in the quran allah spoke about that real clear when he said, Kulin kuntun tuhibun Allah fatabi, and he's telling the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, what to say when these people are saying, I love Allah, I love God. Say to them, if you really love Allah, then follow me. Because then Allah will love you and he will forgive your sins. And he's the forgiver and the merciful. So it's imperative for us to realize at the outset, that the human being, once they've accepted that there really is only one God, that they must also accept the messenger who brought the message about this one God. And he's not bringing anything new. He's not speaking of himself. This is not something he made up. Rather, this is something of revelation that has come from the Rabbil Alameen, the Lord of the worlds. And when Allah first sent the first of all mankind, which was Adam, he sent him with the same message. There is a God. And he's one. And you have to obey him on his terms. And each of the successive prophets who came after that came with the same message. Abraham, peace be upon him. He also came with this message. Moses, peace be upon him. David, peace be upon him. Suleiman, peace be upon him. Jesus the Christ, peace be upon him. All of them that came with this message. There's only one God. Worship God without any partners. This is the message they brought. None of them said, I'm God, worship me. None of them said, I've got a brand new religion, check this out. None of them had a sign out in front of their house, religion for sale by owner. In fact, each of them had this same beautiful message. One God, worship him on his terms. And this is the message which came also with Muhammad. Peace and blessing be upon him. Look what Allah says in the Quran, Ati' Allah wa Ati' Rasul, which means obey Allah and obey His Messenger. And whoever does this, in fact, this is the complete obedience to Allah when they obey the Messenger who brought that message. What was it that each of these prophets said, really? Well, here's what Allah tells us in the Quran about the people before us. The people before us were not ordered anything more than what? That Allah is saying here, these people before us, the Jews, the Christians, and all of those who followed the monotheistic belief, they were never ordered anything more than this, to believe in Allah and keep the religion pure for Him on His terms worshiping him without partners, establishing the regular worship, paying the charity to the poor, and this is the true religion of God. This is the true way, the true way of the believers that follow these prophets. And now when we think about that, what now should be our relationship? What should be our relationship with the prophet Muhammad, peace and blessing be upon him? He's the one who's been sent by Almighty God with this message. He's the one entrusted with the last and final of the revelations called the Quran. 
And he is the one who set the example for us and showed us how to live the life of a Muslim. He showed us how to fulfill our purpose by living up to the standards that are set for us by our Creator and our Sustainer. We shouldn't worship the man who brought the message, of course, but we should worship the Creator in the way that this man, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, worshiped the Creator. And by the way, when we think about that, we should also notice the way he treated other people as well. What was his way? What was his methodology? Or as they call it in Arabic, menhaj. All of this and more I want to discuss in detail, but I want to give you a chance to think about what I'm talking about. So I'm going to let you sit there for a minute, think about this, we'll take a break, and then we'll be right back with more about the beauties, the beauties of Islam. Be right back. Islam is keeping up the pace. Islam is for every race. back and you're watching the beauties of Islam. I'm Yusuf Estes. We've been talking about a very important topic of the relationship between the human being and the Prophet. Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. But for the benefit of those who are not Muslims and you're not quite sure about this or maybe you disagree with that, I'd like to share with you the concept is not different than what it has always been. At the time of Noah, you remember Noah and the ark? The people then were commanded to believe in God, worship Him, and obey Noah. And Noah was telling them nothing more than this. Believe in God and get in the ship before the rain comes. The water's going to come, the ship's going to float, and the people will drown. Those who chose to believe Him and followed Him were saved. And those who didn't, drowned. So each of these prophets, whether it was Moses telling the children of Israel, follow me. And they followed him through the Red Sea. And that must have been pretty scary when you think about the water being parted and they went through. This is mentioned in the Quran. The people of Abraham were ordered to follow him. The people of Lot, or Lut as he's called. And those who were ordered, follow your prophet. Follow your prophet. The people of Jesus, peace and blessings be upon him. The last of the Israelite prophets that come to them. And Look, he's telling them, follow me, follow me, follow me. Obey the commandments, obey Allah. Do what you're told to do, follow me. And those who followed him, they were successful. But those who chose not to follow him and made up something else, obviously they wouldn't be successful. And the warning now comes to you, you Muslims out there listening to me right now. You need to realize that we can make the same mistake as anybody else. And when we deviate away from following our Prophet Muhammad, this is when we're going to have a big problem. Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessing be upon him, is our example. He's our hero. He's our mentor. He is the one that we look to to see how we should behave, how we should act. Let me give you an example about something and let you think about it. Some people will say, well, there's sunnah, meaning things that Prophet did, peace be upon him. And then there are things which we have to do, which is in the Quran. But by the way, this is a big mistake. Because we don't differentiate between what the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, has ordered us and what Allah has ordered us. Not really. Because Allah orders us in the Quran to establish the salah, akim of salah establish this worship. But how do we know how to do it if we don't look to Muhammad, peace be upon him? How? 
Because the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, is showing us how to stand, how to face, how to bow. And more important, look at this. He's telling us how many times. In the Quran, it doesn't mention five times a day. And then some people say, okay, okay, I, I will take that. And that makes sense. And the fasting, yes, I'll do that. But what about the normal things he did every day? For instance, you see I'm sitting here and I'm drinking. Okay, so what? The Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, used to sit when he drank or ate. And you say, okay, now please, you're not going to tell me this is something in Islam. Actually, it is. As a matter of fact, it was known that the only time that he ever stood and drank anything was if it was something called Zamzam water that comes from Mecca. Other than that, he sat when he ate and drank. He sat down. Now, if you said, okay, this is too much. Okay, this is extreme. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Well, guess what happened to me? This is not a joke. I was coming home late one night from a fundraising program. And on the way home, I was about to fall asleep driving. And my little daughter turned up the radio real loud to keep me awake. Daddy, wake up, wake up, you know. And she turns up the radio. And when she did, the voice on the radio is a doctor. And he was speaking and he said, always sit down when you eat or drink. And I went, huh? Who said that? He said, always sit down when you eat or drink. Never stand when you eat or drink. And I'm thinking, wait a minute. And it woke me up. It woke me up good. And I listened to his program all the way to our house. He was saying that if you knew the damages that are caused to the internal organs of the body by standing up when you eat or drink, you would never do that. Now, keep in mind, this is man is just a doctor. He has nothing to do with Islam, nothing to do with the Quran, nothing to do with the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He's telling you for your health that your esophagus tears. You get hiatal hernia. You wind up with this reflux when you have the indigestion that burns and it kicks back up in you. The stomach is damaged. The liver is damaged. The kidneys are damaged. He's naming so many things about the lower bowel or the extended this and that and so. And he's giving so many examples of the damages caused. He said we would reduce the amount of surgery by a huge percentage. And people would not be so sick all the time. People would be much healthier if they would just learn how to sit down when they eat or drink. This is coming to us from who? This is coming to us from those people who we glorify and say, Oh, he's a big scientist. He's a big doctor. He's Wow, he knows everything. He's from the West. Amazing, isn't it? But these same things were taught to us 1,400 years ago by the messenger. The messenger of the Creator. The one who created all of us in the first place, who clearly made it known to us how to deal with the body that He gave us. But now, now if I choose to follow that, now if I sit down when I eat or drink, am I doing it for my body? Am I doing it for my health? Or am I doing it for my Lord because I'm following the messenger that He sent? And that's something you'll have to deal with inside of yourself. But if you had any doubts before, this should remove every single doubt you have about following the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. He was sent, as Allah said in the Quran, as a mercy to the mankind. He was sent as a mercy. He's an example to us. And he's the Rahmat to the Alameen, a mercy to the world. Who? Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessing be upon him. We know as Muslims that he's our messenger. But did we stop and think that he's given us the full example of everything in our life? The Quran comes to us as the last and final revelation. And the Prophet, peace be upon him, is the example of that, how to live it. It was his own wife, his own wife who said this about him. She said, if you would like to see an example of the Quran in motion, look to the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. Well, we've run out of time already in this episode. And there's so much more that we wanted to tell you about. So catch us on the internet at beautiesofislam.com beautiesofislam.com where you'll find this and many other programs talking about the beauties of Islam. Till next time, peace. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Islam is peace. Islam is ease. Islam is not danger.